Hello everyone! Today I'm excited to show you my 100 Days of Fohobunichi, part of my 100 Day project. And I'm going to be drawing out the page. This is the finished page, but I'm going to start from the beginning here. I'm going to be using those butterfly stickers, but I'm going to start with a pencil and just doodle the page out here. I'm starting with a swirl to the left side of the page another one to the right, and then I'm going to draw a little um, ender swirl down. And then I'm going to put a little quote in that box. Um, so I'm working with a Pentel brush pen. Love these pens. This has been sped up so that I really don't draw quite this quickly. Um, we're going about two times the pace that I actually draw. I love these pens, they're addicting, and I just fill them up with um, carbon black ink when they're empty. So you can buy cartridges for them too, but I just refill mine. So I'll let you watch how I do the swirls here. I constantly have to be turning the page around and around and around. Just That's just how I work. I don't know if anybody else does that, but I certainly do. So I'm trying to make it a nice bold line. And then I'll switch to a thinner nib when I start doing the floral accents. I had a little bit of a hair on the pen there. So this is my little quote box. Okay, the basic outlining is done, and now I'll do floral doodles, and I'll sure up the edges of the swirls with the multi-ball pen, Pilot Multi-Ball. I love these. There's two sizes, and you can order them from Jet Pens. This is the smallest size. They're small and medium, but they are wonderful because you can watercolor over them. You can use them on top of acrylics. I love these pens. Once I have all the lines all shirred up and straight, I can't, I have a hard time keeping a straight edge with that brush pen, so I always go back and fix edges. It's not necessary really. It usually takes me about half an hour to an hour to finish a page like this. So now I'm going to draw in the flowers as I fix the camera there. <laughs> but first I guess I'm a racing. I should have cut that out of the video. Sorry guys. You can buy these, the polymer, the white polymer erasers now, which is new. Okay, so I'm adding some stickers. I don't always add stickers, but once in a while I'll see some stickers that I just have to have somewhere, and these were really fun kind of stickers to, that I found. So what I'm pointing out is that it's nice to have color pop up and down the page. So usually done in threes or fives or sevens just, just to give it interest and not to cluster it in all one area. So now I'm drawing my own flowers around the existing stickers that I put down. It it incorporates the stickers 
more into the design when you do it this way. That's what I feel like anyway. And I'm adding a couple more flowers because there's little that little blank area right there. And now I'm going to outline the flowers. You could use any permanent pen for this. And you could actually paint first and then add your details with your pen. I just like to add the pen first. Just depends on how you work. So I'm going to be using the watercolors from Prima and I'm going to use the classic colors on this page. To me, they, they're watercolors and I really like the, them, but, and they're really bright, but they actually, to me, work a lot like ink because they're very staining colors and, uh, to me, it just has a feel of working with ink rather than watercolors. I really like it, but I don't know what what pigment, I'm sure it's pigmented too, but they do have a, a high saturation of color that does stain really easily. And maybe that's why I think of them as more of an ink. But I do love their vibrancy and boldness, so I've been using them a lot on my pages. And I have all three sets, but I tend to use the classic colors the most and then the tropicals. The decadent pies are nice for the metallics, and I should probably use them more often. So maybe in the next couple pages that I create, I'll pull out the decadent pie set and use those colors. So when I do the flowers, I usually tuck them into the corners that you couldn't really write in. To, in. Um, as you can tell, they're in the little corners of those swirls. And there's no way I could get words crammed in there. So I tend to tuck images in there. I don't believe there's a right or wrong way to do a page, though. So if you totally mess up a page, it's okay because you have another day. Plenty of my pages are far from perfect, but I do really love to do them, so I keep trudging along. All right, I think I'm good with that. I'm going to add the date here. I messed up, so I'm going <laughs> to scribble into the um, letters. I was going to color into the letters, but I messed them up. So you just improvise as you go. And today will be the 19th, the first day of the 100, the 100 day project. All right. So now I'm going to, because I was trying to fit a specific amount of words in that area, I usually don't write with pencil first, but I wanted to make sure that it would fit since my tagline of 100 Fo Ho Bonichi would fit in there. So usually I just write on the page. I guess today I'm using my pencil for everything. Usually I, I don't lay pages out like this. So now I'm looking at my phone to, to get quotes that I have tagged on Pinterest that I like. It's funny because I am voicing over this journal and I did not realize that I use pencil throughout, which is kind of confusing me because I usually don't do that. Anyway, so you get to see me create something differently today. So I'm just reading the quotes.
I unfortunately have a love-hate thing going on with Pinterest. I love it, but it sucks time out of my life. So, all right. So now I'm just going to write in the words. Usually I, I actually write after I've painted. So... You can do it either way. If you want to see other pages that I've created, my hashtag is 100 Day Faux Hobonichi on Instagram. So after I finish up the writing here, we'll move on to paint. Trying to fit that quote in that little area. Mm -hmm. Finish up this little quote. Usually I pick a quote that's been sitting in a journal that I have by my computer. And when I see a nice quote, I will write it down. But sometimes I get my phone out and use Pinterest also. These lines I'm creating will be my actual journaling for what happened during the day. Sometimes I do a lot more. Okay, so we're going to start painting. This is the classic set from Prima. I'm just using a basic watercolor brush. I think it's a number four from Daniel Smith. You have to work really fast. I know that this video sped up, but you have to work really fast with the Prima colors because they are staining. If you don't work fast, they'll, um, they'll there'll be a definite line between the colors. So. Unfortunately, I was working fairly fast when I did that. And you can kind of see the line there with the green. I'm really scrubbing on it, so it will. I waited a little bit too long there. And you know, I don't know why I start in the middle of the swirl, but I do almost every time. It would be easier if I started from one end and went to the other. But I can't do anything the easy way. Here's where I realized I forgot the green at the bottom. No, I didn't. I want to put purple. I thought I was going to put green. That's what happens when you go back and voice over the video that you made. But you'll see how bright these colors are. Right now I'm adding yellow to the middle of flower and then to the green, yellow to the green bright side of the leaf. Again, I'm flipping my page over and now I'm going to be painting in the little quote area. Because why would you finish all the leaves and flowers before you did that? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just don't think. I just kind of just do what I'm what's in front of my face and okay purple is going to go on the background there still didn't finish those flower leaves up or the insides of those flowers and I like to vary the backgrounds from one color to another so that one's going to be purple and blue And I'm going to do a purpley pink here on the bottom, which matches that tape really well. Tape on the right hand side. I like to incorporate the colors of the washi tape in the actual painting of the page. And these colors are a really good crafting color, the watercolor set. Um, 
I'm not sure that I would use it for a professional like watercolor painting because they tend to get kind of get once they're dry they're a little bit chalky Again, these colors tend to, if you leave them too long, they'll tend to have a line in them because they're so staining that I you have to work really fast on these backgrounds. I'm adding the pink up there to kind of balance the pink down at the bottom of the page. So the background's done. Well, almost done. It's funny what you see when you go back and watch yourself because they did not fill in the the center of that nine and that <laughs> I don't even know why that happened. Okay, now I'm going to finish up the leaves, but not the ones I forgot up there. Now I am. Uh, I don't even understand how I paint when I'm watching myself. So these are really fun watercolor pens, pens. and I have the watercolor paint pens that everybody's been using, but I also want to try a different company, and Jet Pens has a different company, and hold on, I'll get the name for you. Well, the company is SAI, which I'm going to assume is Say, and they're Japanese traditional colors and the rest of the write, writing is in Japanese but if you go on jet pens and look for watercolor pen you'll find them and they're very vibrant they are staining watercolors also so they work well with these paints and it, they're hard to lift after they dry You can't, you would have to use watercolor paper to ma help them lift and you'll have to do that right as they're drying because after they dry they're really hard to get the color to um, bleed or to blend. I haven't done a lot of playing with them but the a little bit that I did do was on watercolor paper and I had a hard time blending the colors together. They're, but they're great to just use as a brush and that could be because I haven't used them before this is like the first time I pulled the brushes out to use them well second time I did use them on watercolor paper so usually my paintings start looking really flat right about this time because I add details with Posca pens after the fat after the fact sorry so right now I'm just trying to get all the color down that I want here's where I noticed I didn't do the middle of the 19 so I have to go back and I remember that going what how did I forget that so luckily that green matched pretty well so I just put it in the middle and then blended it with the other paint Then I decided to use that for the leaves. I did kind of a calico effect on the leaves. I don't know if that's what I should call it, but I use the darker color in between the veining lines. It's just kind of a faux leaf thing that I do sometimes.
So at this page, I usually don't like the pa the page that I'm doing. I really want to add something more to it. So that's when I get the I'll get ink pens out again and make the black darker, which I'm doing right now. Just in the on the swirl pages or on the swirl design, sorry. That helps make the the watercolor color pop off the page. And then as you can see, I have the Posca markers there. And then I start adding details with those, which really pops the page. That's like my favorite part. My pages are really, really bright and gaudy. And I love doing that, so. Not all of my artwork is that way, because I can paint realistically, but just when I'm in my journal or whatever, I love just to be bold and bright and do whatever I want, because that's a, I learn a lot from just playing like this. It comes natural to me and I don't have to think about it. I learn what color schemes I like together I learned that a lot of the stuff I like is kind of over the top, but so already I think the page is looking better, but I'm adding more to it. You see how the Posca markers add a dimensional quality to the page. couldn't get that marker to work so I changed markers. You have to store these markers horizontally not vertically just in case you have Posca markers that aren't working. You have to store them a certain way or they'll not really dry up. They'll pool in the cap if you have them capped down or they'll pool at the bottom and you can if you get them in time you can kind of reconstitute them by washing the nib with water or whatever, but it's <laughs> I'm shaking that marker so much I'm surprised paint isn't going all over the page. But anyway, <laughs> so the marker must be running out of paint. The nibs kind of get, um, they get dried paint on them because then it's acrylic marker. So a lot of times I will have to wash them off either with water or I will get um, rubbing alcohol and run across the nib and that will take the crusty paint off. But I love Posca markers. I think they are pretty darn amazing. Oh, so now I'm going to add glitter, because what's a page without glitter? This glitter is a clear glitter that I'm just going to accent areas with. You could use um, a shimmer pen if you wanted. I just had the glitter paints sitting around, so I'm just trying to knock the glitter down with my finger. And then I'm going to use gold to go along the edges. Cuz you're going to if you're going to be gaudy, you might as well be, might as well be really gaudy like I am here. So I'm going to I'm putting a really fine line of gold glitter around the swirl of the page. You do have to let the page dry for a couple of hours after you do this. So just remember that it's not going to be an instant dry. You're going to have to set it on a shelf or on a table for a while. Here the bad thing about glitter glue is it gets plugged up. So I'm trying to clear the top of the glitter off right currently. Got it unplugged. I don't put the glitter on all of the pages. I just thought it would be fun to have that first page really over the top. 
but just that little bit of Posca pen in what three different colors pink green and uh, white and a little bit of glitter really makes that page pop out and the glitter does add shiny effect to the page so those stickers look like they belong more so than if you didn't have any other shiny areas on the page so there's the page I'll show you a close-up here and then the page again And I hope you enjoyed watching me create my first page in my 100 day project. Thanks for watching.